Today's psalm is Psalm 127, and it's the second in this triad, which then means that its theme is about God's protection, care, and provision for his covenant people. Um, Paul says that we're filled with the Spirit as we sing to one another psalms like these, and yet today so uh, it's so rare for the psalms to be sung in corporate worship or even sung in our own personal devotions. Sometimes the reason for this is because we find it hard to understand the relevance of some references. <clears throat> so, for instance, in this one, the reference to sons as a heritage from the Lord and children and uh, so forth. Uh, some of my feel, well, that's just not relevant to me. Uh, I don't have children. Um, sons are not what they used to be in the Old Testament. So we sort of neglect the psalm and maybe pick up one or two verses uh, that we uh, like to recall out of it rather than singing the whole psalm. And so I hope to try and deal with that in this brief introduction. The psalm was composed by Solomon in a double context. It had to do with the building of the house for Yahweh that David had commissioned and also the promise that Yahweh would build a house for David, a dynasty for David. <laughs> and after Solomon wrote it, it was added to the songs that the pilgrims on their way up to Jerusalem, would sing um, as part of the journey. Uh, in the first couple of uh, first verse, in fact, where he speaks about God uh, building the house and God watching over the city, it's not just a principle of wisdom applied to believers, but it's a principle of divine providence in all human activity. John Calvin says this. The order of society, both political and domestic, is maintained solely by the blessing of God, not by the policy, diligence, or wisdom of man. So this psalm speaking about God's sovereignty, about top-down thinking in every aspect of human government uh, or human activity. If God is not initiating, developing, and watching over a project, it can't be completed. But of course, it has special application for the lives of God's covenant people in our family, our work, our church, the projects we're involved in. So although it's universally true, because Yahweh is governor of all the earth at all times and in all ways, it's specifically and particularly true for us. Uh, speaking of his comprehensive care for his covenant people, our success and the prosperity of our plans does not depend on us alone, but on him. Therefore, if we allow stress to drive us into activity that damages us mentally, emotionally, physically, or spiritually in robbing us, for instance, of time for prayer, then all that activity is in vain. The Hebrew says we gain nothing by all of that. What a word when we're surrounded by a society that's in an unprecedented mental health crisis. Verse 3 sings about his beloved one. How blessed is his beloved one. And of course, Solomon's alternative name, Jedediah, meant the beloved one. But it also speaks to us who are kings and priests. We are part of David's dynasty in Christ in a covenant relationship with Yahweh, seated with Christ in heavenly places, and to learn to reign in life. And this psalm is about really reigning in life through the one man, Christ Jesus. We are the ones, the beloved ones, who sing songs like this and psalms like this in times of stress and distress. And verse 3 tells us that he gives, Yahweh gives his help, his resources, and his blessing to our lives and projects even when we're sleeping, because we're not depending on ourselves, but we're depending on him. And then in verse 3, he comes uh, to give a specific example of this. And uh, it begins by the word behold, which means look carefully. It's trying to get our attention. Look at this example carefully and think about it. Children are not just the fruit of human activity. They are a gift from Yahweh. Even conception and birth for believers and unbelievers is impossible without divine action. Look at that carefully. When the word reward is used, it means something that man hasn't generated himself. It's something that's come from outside of him. Think carefully about the birth of children and sons. It is divine 
activity, not just human activity. And then verse 4 and 5, of course, in the context of the Middle Eastern culture, speak about how sons were a resource, something you could depend on when the pressure was on and when you were under threat. But they're only a specific example of the general principles Solomon is, is speaking to us about. So how do we sing this today and apply it to our worship? Well, first of all, as I've been saying, these are only a, uh, this is only an example of what Solomon's saying to all of God's people. We are to depend on Yahweh and his covenant for blessing and success in all of our plans and never to depend on ourselves or any other human resources. We'll not be disappointed, he says, even when Satan and whoever he stirs up to resist and oppose what God's doing in our lives, the enemy in the gate, will not be disappointed. Human Natural resources are necessary, but never to be depended on the way we depend on Yahweh. And this points to the primary place of prayer in our lives. And when we get uh, stressed or distressed and, and so anxious, we're just putting extra hours into our work and so on. Often we're robbing ourselves of the necessity of prayer. And there's a great example of top-down thinking in Philippians 4, where Paul really applies this to the primacy of prayer. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord. He's governing all things. He's near. Don't be anxious about anything. Don't be driven by anxiety. But instead, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, thanksgiving for the promises of God, thanksgiving that he has promised, like in this psalm, that he will bless our work, our projects, as we depend on him. With thanksgiving, make your request known to him. And his peace will guard your heart and mind. So especially when you're faced with anxiety about the outcome of your situation, which is what Paul's addressing, when you're anxious, give the time to prayer and supplication. Sing psalms like this until you're back into top-down thinking. But I think there's a second application, and uh, I think this may have a reference about sons to Jesus himself and his sons. Isaiah 53 says, he will see his offspring. And we who are in the covenant of grace are his offspring. We, as it were, are the sons the Father has given him. That when he confronts the enemy in the gate, uh, and uh, as we know Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against him and his church. That we stand with him. We may with him confront those enemies. And uh, what a need for that is today in the tide of evil and unbelief and ungodly values, the undermining of the very foundations of morality and even identity, what is male or female in our society. It's a time for those who know how to depend upon God and to stand with Christ, to be arrows in his quiver to take their place. When Jesus' sons take up their authority as kings and priests and challenge Satan and his hosts with aggressive prayer and proclamation, they will not be disappointed. How necessary and practical then this song is for our praise today. If we're to be filled with the Spirit and learn how to think in a top-down way about our personal lives and dealing with pressure and anxiety and the precious feeling Christ church in a hostile world. Calvin says this, Solomon would have us recognize in a specific example of the sons and of children coming from God, the truth which he has asserted generally, the life of man, all men, is governed by God. <laughs> Unless Yahweh builds up the house, the builders work in vain. Un yes, Yahweh, the city guards. Its watchmen cannot save, its watchmen cannot save. To rise up early, work till late, to earn enough to live is vain. For those he loves should know In sleep Yahweh can give In sleep Yahweh can give 
Luke, when he gives the gift of sons, blessing the fruitful wood, like arrows in a warrior's hand. Our sons born in one's youth, our sons born in one's youth. A man who has his quiver full of them can celebrate. He won't back down when he confronts his enemies in the gate, his enemies in the gate, his enemies in the gate, his enemies in the gate.